afternoon, everyone. I'm Mecca Galani. I'm Michelle Hairston. I'm Colin Erner. And I'm Rakia Robertson. And today we're going to be talking to you all about identifying peers in crisis. Imagine you are packing all your things to move to VCU in a couple of days. That bittersweet moment is now starting to hit you. You are excited to begin this new chapter in your life, but you have to leave all your family and friends behind. The big day finally arrives and your parents share their tears and say their goodbyes. Now, you are left all alone with your roommate that you barely even know. As the semester progresses, you are having trouble adjusting to change. You are overwhelmed with your workload because classwork is way harder now than it was in high school. You still have no friends and you barely know your way around campus. It is not hard to imagine how these stressors can push someone to become lonely or depressed. Now your grades begin to slip because you have no motivation to attend class anymore. Then, right before midterms, you get sick. So now you have to miss your exams and spend your 18th birthday in bed. At this point, you just want to give up. Imagine how many VCU students are going through a similar issue to this right now that no one knows about. Or think about the VCU freshmen who are having trouble coping with this new life. What about the students who have already planned not to come back next semester? Anxiety is the top concern among college students, followed by depression and relationship problems, according to the American Psychological Association. In order to improve the existing mental health resources here at VCU, we have an ethical duty to provide students with as much support as possible by training undergraduate teaching assistants in the focus inquiry department to become first responders in mental health. University Counseling Services is a great, pro great program that strives to remove barriers to student success, but there is no such thing as too much care. Looking at the extreme implications of what Ricky is talking about, I'd like to talk about two nationwide epidemics related to mental health that are affecting our college. Looking, <clears throat> the leading cause of death among college and university students in the U.S. is suicide. <clears throat> this is according to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration. Between 6.5 and 7.5 per 100,000 students um, complete suicides every year. Um, suicide is the lead killer, and if we stand back now and do nothing about it, and not try to mitigate the problem, we do a disservice to ourselves, to our university, and to the country at large. This previous semester alone, there were several cases of on-campus suicides at VCU. The problem is at our doorstep, and we must begin to mitigate the problem. Untreated mental illness is also related to another nationwide epidemic, that of on-campus mass shootings. Um, school shootings happen in this country far too often. And if we begin to look at mental health as a contributing factor to this problem, we begin to see that the problem cannot be ignored. 23 mass shootings occurred on college campuses alone in 2015. This is according to the New York Times. This is a serious epidemic and one that goes un almost unprecedented everywhere else in the world. How are we letting this happen? Students are having trouble getting to a place, both mentally and physically, in which they feel comfortable attending a university counseling service. One in four college students have a diagnosable mental illness, and 40% do not seek help. This is according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. 95% of college counseling services in the US believe that untreated mental illness is a growing and worrisome problem. This is according to the Association for University and College Counseling Services annual report. In this report, it said that 21% of students who come in to receive help have a severe mental health concern, and 40% have mild ones. These harming statistics go back to what Rakia was mentioning earlier, that at this early age when we're entering into college, we're at, the, we're, the most, we're at our most vulnerable state to succumb to things like depression and anxiety and other <coughs> mental health concerns. It is our ethical duty at an institutional level to provide training for UTA to become first responders in mental health because of what's mentioned in our mission statement. VCU's mission statement mentions advancement in student success through healthcare that strives to preserve and restore healthcare for all people. How could we ignore our very own mission statement? It has been shown that mental health problems affect the individual academic performance, including things like receiving incomplete grades, dropping courses, receiving lower grades in class, on exams, and on important projects, according to the National College Health Assessment. I know the solution will work because of, because of the relationship students have with their TAs. Students and TAs are closer in age, which reduces that authoritative presence that students might feel when trying to talk to their professors. 
And from personal experience, I was just a freshman last year. I know how stressful it can be trying to, um, you know, get your life together, trying to figure out how you're gonna get around campus and all that stuff. So it would have been nice to have someone to guide me in the right direction. Talking to someone who has dealt with a similar experience helps, according to the US Department of Health and Human Services. Now, as a UTA, I've been there, I've done that, and now I'm ready to help. BCU currently has several existing mental health resources for students on campus, which are great. However, they all require students to reach out for help on their own, making many uncomfortable. Some are too embarrassed to reach out to strangers with their problems, some don't want to feel like they need a shrink, and others just, say, just can't seem to find the time to stop by and make counseling appointments. Training UTAs to become first responders in mental health removes this burden because UTAs will reach out to their students themselves. <coughs> While some may say that this training for UTAs is unnecessary because we already have RAs who are peer leaders who supervise on-campus housing residents, off-campus students have no RA. However, almost everyone at BCU is required to take focused inquiry. And because UTAs have such unique access to their students, um, require, as they're required to meet with their students two to three times per week, and since class sizes are so small, it will be easy for UTAs to work with RAs to learn students' patterns of behavior. This way, warning signs of mental illness such as increased sleeping in class, ignored academic obligations, and changes in weight, mood, and attitude do not go unnoticed. While not all focused inquiry classes have UTAs, approximately 45% of them do. And once trained to identify the warning signs, UTAs can help anyone, so the help is not limited to classes and can make an even larger impact on our campus. And we all know that UTAs all do a relatively large amount of work for a relatively little amount of credit. However, we feel that if we were trained to respond more effectively with students to um, students in crisis, we would be more confident in our abilities to help them solve their problems. In conclusion, all universities, including VCU, have students who are su suffering from mental health crises, which puts their success and well-being at risk. While VCU already has several resources aimed at helping these students, it is not always easy for them to access or reach out to on their own. This is why training focus, the Focus Inquiries Department undergraduate teaching assistants to become first responders in mental health will not only provide another resource for suffering students, but also help to remove some of the burden or shame that these students feel when deciding that they need to seek help. We have already spoken with the interim director for VCU Student Counseling Services, Dr. Sydney McDonald, and she has given us her full support of our venture. This idea is a dream as of now, but with your help and support, we can make it real. Thank you.